Hey yo, guns and roses, sons and soldiers, drug gang, cocaine, axe and range, rovers, snakes, plan up ways to set their own man up for grams when they back up. Crystal white at night, pistols might lift you like heat seeking missiles. Streets tip you. Guys, what is up? Welcome to another episode of Maximilian Must Know. Got a designer sent to take a look at today from the house of Lacoste. Um, and for a brand that is in Sephora and somewhat widely regarded, it's certainly taken a while for me to review a fragrance from this house. Today we'll be looking at one called Style in Play. And before we talk about the scent, let's take a look at Lacoste. Lacoste was a house that uh, that's French in origin. It started in 1933 by Rene Lacoste and a gentleman named Andre Gillier. Uh, Rene Lacoste was a tennis player. Gillier was the owner and president of a very large French knitwear company. And so basically they started doing shirts for Rene Lacoste with a crocodile uh, near the breast. They claim that that was actually the first example of a brand uh, brand logo on clothing. Um, but evidently there's a swimwear company called Janssen uh, was that was making swimwear with Janssen written on it back in 1921. Besides doing shirts for tennis, Lacoste also did shirts for golf and sailing. And in 1951, they started to do other colors than just tennis white. In 1952, these shirts were imported to the United States and they were looked at as a status symbol of a competent sportsman. The shirts were sold at Brooks Brothers until the late 1960s. In 1963, Bernard, Bernard Lacoste took over management of the company from his father Rene and he really helped to blow the brand up in the 70s and 80s they started doing other things clothing other articles of clothing glasses deck shoes sneakers and of course fragrances now in the 2000s a French designer named Christophe Lemaire took over as creative director and he really worked to create a more modern and upscale look and as of now, there are almost 50 million Lacoste products being sold in over 110 countries. Now, as far as my brand experience goes, guys, I started fucking with Lacoste in the mid-2000s pretty heavy. You know, I've mentioned I have about 50 Ralph Lauren polo shirts, all, all kinds of patterns and styles and colors. At my height of clothes shopping, I probably had over 100. And I've got a good 10 to 15 Lacoste ones. And I had a really look cool Lacoste uh, track jacket that I copped in 2010 from this place in Soho called Active Warehouse and it had this ill stash pocket in the lining that I remember I always used to keep weed in um, but to this day I think Lacoste makes really high quality sportswear uh, anything beyond that I don't really know about you know um, now on the fragrance tip Procter & Gamble holds the right to Lacoste they also have Boss, Rokas, Zur, Escada, Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci etc they're pretty big from uh, from this house, I own this one, and, and that's the one I'm reviewing. And I have one more on my to purchase list called Blanc Limited Edition from their L12 L12 series. I'm not a huge fan of Lacoste fragrances because I find them all pretty close to each other. They all sort of have this sporty vibe to them, uh, minus some of the earlier stuff. And I just think that's not really my style. You know, I think you only need so many of those in your collection. I cop this one from Century 21 in the Financial District. You guys know I like to have something from at least every house in my collection. And for me, in the price range, this was the best bet. You can see from this sticker, this 75 ml bottle was $30. Um, I another reason why I was interested in this one is because one of my favorite perfumers, Enique Minardo, did this one in 2004. Lacoste has 35 fragrances in their collection. The first was called Lacoste for Men, which came out in 1984. If you are unfamiliar with Enique Minardo, please familiarize yourself. But she's done Visit by Azaro, Jaipur for Boucheron, Black for Bulgari, Bois d'Argent for Dior, Potion for D Squared, etc. And the notes on this one are green apple and thuja at the top, pine tree, jasmine, and cedar in the middle, patchouli, vetiver, and white musk in the base. This one is really easy to find online. You shouldn't pay over 30 bucks. I paid $30 for this 75 ml bottle. Now, as far as your presentation goes, you guys took, took a look. I don't actually think it says smile, style, and play uh, anywhere on the, on the bottle. Uh, does it say it on the sticker? 
it does not. So this one, I guess, could pretty easily become confused with Lacoste Red, but the difference is that Lacoste Red, the bottle is red all the way through. This one sort of has that fade uh, effect, and you do have these nice ridges on the side to hold the bottle. Uh, the sprayer is pretty good, and the cap is actually curved in, if you could see that. So not, not a bottle that's going to blow anyone away, but certainly, certainly fine. And as far as the fragrance goes, this is what I would describe as a nice fragrance. It's a very very light apple and floral sweet scent. And what I like about this one, for me at least, is that it does sort of break the perception that Lacoste can only do really sporty scents. This is not a sports scent at all. Uh, more than anything else, what I get out of this one, and it's not that complex, is some apple. The apple is synthetic, and that apple is joined by just a little bit of pine, a nice dose of woods, which what I would imagine where the Thuja comes into play. Thuja is also known as red or white cedar. And then with the Thuja, the pine, and the apple, you're going to get a little bit of a hit of exaggerated jasmine and some white musk. And for me, Lacoste style and play is a combination of all those notes, and it's blended very well. That blend is apple, flowers, woods, and musk. It's pleasant. Uh, and though the jasmine and apple is synthetic, to me, the blend is very sophisticated. I'm really impressed, and that's probably because Enic Bernardo is so good at these well-blended, sweeter men's fragrances. Um, this is one that I wouldn't skip. I'd look at it if you're a fan of the work of Minardo. As this one dries down on the skin, the apple because becomes less prominent and it dries down to a woody, musky scent. But even that is very pleasant and it sort of has a nice, clean and fresh vibe to it. I would say performance on this is average for a designer scent. You won't be let down, but you will not be blown away. It will do its job for you. It's not a beast of a projector, nor is it a slouch. It will last longer than it will project in the CI is fairly light. I think any sex could wear this one and most Monardo creations fall that way. And really time, any time of year is, is fine for this one. Um, I would say it's probably best for spring or summer. And for me, this is a work or casual fragrance. I wouldn't go much further than using it for those applications personally. Um, if you're looking for something similar to this, can't get this, whatever, I'm going to tell you, this one's fairly unique. I think, um, as I said, there's another scent called Lacoste Red, uh, and that's a flanker that was also done by Minardo, but the low notes are a little different, even though they were both released in 2004. What this one reminds me a little bit of is Boss Bottled, which also has that apple. It reminds me a bit of Legend by Azaro with the nice musk and apple. Uh, this one, for me, is, is, is fairly unique but it's still a fruity designer scent so let that be your guide if you're looking for something similar and apple is what provides the fruit note uh, you could also look at f by ferragamo which which we reviewed which pairs apple with leather and lavender or you could look at desire by dunhill which also has apple in it as well if someone were trying to talk you into purchasing this, I think they would tell you that it's fairly unique. It's another Nick Minardo scent. You can never have enough of those. Uh, it's a good price, and it's a crowd pleaser. But I think on the flip side, if someone were trying to get you to take a pass on this one, they would tell you, how many fruity designer scents do you need, and are there better? The answer to that is yes, and I think they would also say this one is very synthetic. Guys, for me, this is a 6.5 out of 10. It's not that original. It smells synthetic, and it's not a performance monster, but it is a very likable and affordable fragrance that is a little different from what else is out there on the designer side of things, and it's a people pleaser. I like the bottle. I think it's nicely designed, and the ridges are cool. I think Minardo is an excellent perfumer. I applaud uh, Lacoste for making not making a sports set with this one. I just think there's some really good things about this, but at the end of the day, it's still what it is, and, and that's a fragrance that's not too special. So six and a half out of 10, guys. If you have any questions on this, of course, you know, I'd be more than happy to answer what I can. And I, of course, will see you guys next week with more videos. Guys, you know what it is. My name is Maximilian. Like We've been through life, cold blood, living sinful. Though we learned from old dogs that made it. Peace out, they played it. We rated, then evaluated, calculated ages. We be the days that we.